The National Assembly has started another process of amending the country's electoral laws. In this public hearing, organized by the Senate Committee on INEC and House Committees of Electoral Matters, there was a previous attempt by the 8th Assembly to amend the electoral law before the 2019 election. However, President Buhari refused to sign the bill into law. The ongoing 9th Assembly insists they will amend the Electoral Act in good times ahead of the 2023 general elections. These Nigerians from different organizations gathered in this hall want the improvement of the electoral legal framework and expected the 2023 election to be free and fair. It is a nature of progress and it is a future we might con continue to witness. What matters, however, is how we navigate ourselves through the challenges, believing that democracy is the most suitable system for us, given our diversity and our commitment to remain a united nation. In rethinking the Electoral Act No. 6 of 2010, our focus should naturally be on revolving, resolving tangles like imagined legal ambiguities, sometimes resulting to avoid with hiccups, while rules and regulations are important in the administration of elections. The element of clarity is also significant. Securing the process is similarly very important. We also have concerns that the electoral legal framework on certain issues should be well settled ahead of the 2023 elections, such as the use of technological devices like the card reader and electronic voting system, criteria for substitution of candidates, disclosure of source of funds contributed to political parties, replacement of lost or destroyed permanent voters' card, penalty for the position of fake voters' card, date for the primary elections shall not be earlier than 150 days, and not later than 120 days before the date of election, etc. The bill which seeks to repeal the Electoral Act 2010 addresses many loopholes in our electoral system by way of amending over 300 clauses. I want to assure you that the proposed amendment will focus on areas of public and institutional agitation, which include, but not limited, Number one, greater institutional independence of INEC. Two, legal recognition of electronic accreditation of voters, e voting, e collation, and electronic transmission of results. Three, establishment of electoral offenses commission to prosecute electoral offenders. D, include women, youth, and persons with disability in the electoral process. E, strengthen the financial autonomy of INEC by providing legal timelines for the release of funds to INEC for the conduct of administration of election. As we work together to review our legal framework for elections, we must be conscious of our realities as a people and we enact a law that addresses both our present concerns and the future of our democracy as a united people.